Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Well, hello there. This is KY4BDP Brian for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. Well, who's this fella? Well, that's KY4CKP, and he's, uh, I guess, showing off the two solar panels that we want to use for the solar panel charging project for the emergency communications trailer. Uh, we want to put these uh, together with some hinges, do the wiring, take advantage of a charge controller inside of the trailer, and then charge the house battery on the trailer with these two panels on a nice sunny day or even a partially sunny day and so that was the basic project this is going to be part one of that project now what we're looking at here are uh, the hinges that we're going to use for the two panels and we've just put the panels facing each other and then utilize some clamps to keep them together um, these piano hinges were just laying around the shop. Now, like a lot of Elmers in the Ham Radio Club, they've got a lot of new old stock just laying around. They, a lot of these guys are pack rats, and so they've got uh, pieces, parts all over the place, and AC4DM is no exception. If you need it, he's probably got it. And sure enough, he's got piano hinges. Now, the original piano hinges were a little bit too long, so we needed to go ahead and size them more appropriately. And that's what we're showing here is we actually took a piano hinge and we took a bandsaw and basically cut him in or cut it in half and then place the piano hinges of uh, the same amount of distance from the ends so that we would get nice rigid uh, but supportive hinge for the two panels now the panels are not light uh, these are 20 year old panels yes you heard me correctly uh, AC4DM has had these panels for a very long time um, and just hadn't gotten around to using them on a project in fact he's got a couple more we're going to use for one of our repeater sites so in any event we need to take those hinges and install them and one of the first things we need to do is get an idea now if you look closely at these hinges they're not terribly wide and so we need to be careful that when we drill holes into the aluminum which by the way was a little bit thicker in uh, going uh, down from this direction uh, that we don't go into the substrate uh, we kind of wish the hinges had been a little bit wider but uh, this is what we had to work with and so we need to mark this both from the edge top edge to your right and along each of the holes now we chose to uh, basically skip a hole so we use a bottom hole skip a hole go to the top skip a hole go to the bottom in a zigzag configuration also what we're looking at here is when we put the panels together we also need to open up the electrical box or the uh, the current uh, over uh, the over current huh, I'll get it right in a minute the current protection we'll just call it that there's some diodes I'll show you that in another picture here in just a minute so we'll be opening up that black little panel not only to wire the uh, the uh, solar panels but to also double check that everything is going to work given their age which by the way we didn't get this on camera but each of these panels uh, is brand new effectively uh, uh, had never been used so we checked them out and they actually came in at 21 and a half volts each and we're going to put them in parallel going into our charge controller which is a 12 volt charge controller so what we're looking at here is we've actually measured from the edge the uh, vertical line that you see there and we've also drilled our first hole to get an idea of what that's going to look like make sure we don't go into the substrate and so forth and we'll want to repeat this again we're going in an alternating pattern so we're using a bottom and then a top as we move from left to right so bottom top bottom top so that the screw heads don't line up and prevent us from opening the two panels uh, as wide as we would like them to be which we'll show you in another shot so here we've got a couple of the fasteners in place now originally we had screws uh, about one inch uh, and a nut with a star washer to kind of dig into the underside um, but we found that uh, the way that these uh, uh, way we were drilling the holes and so forth that we didn't have a lot of shall we say um, 
wiggle room to uh, make sure we're not going into the substrate that we ended up going with a fastener instead of these screws uh, and nuts but in any event you kind of get a feel of how we're going to lay this out and in the next shot we actually can see that zigzag pattern although we didn't follow that exactly on each of the uh, of the hinges but it is good enough so here we go you can kind of see that zigzag pattern from starting from the left going to the right uh, but due to how the hinge was actually uh, lining up a little bit and not wanting to drill into the substrate we used the two fasteners on the right just at the top we had enough screws there though on the other panel that it's really good this is just the first piano hinge uh, the second piano hinge was essentially done the same way uh, close to the top and close to the bottom so that when the two panels open up they have enough support uh, in that open configuration it turned out really really well again this is just finding parts laying around the shop that hadn't been used for any other project up to that point. Now this is the actual electrical box that we're going to attach our wiring to. Uh, the bottom left terminal is for your negative. The bottom right terminal, far right, is your positive terminal. The diodes up at the top prevent current from coming back into the panel if you have a uh, voltage uh, mismatch where the current wants to run in the wrong direction. Uh, the current will stop. Those diodes prevent uh, the current from uh, damaging the photovoltaic cells and that's what they're for and then what we have to do is just wire some uh, some zip cord into the the left and the right terminals and you can see the little round hole on the right is where the wire will exit now ac4dm also had some fittings i'm always amazed at how many pieces parts he has laying around the shop and you can see the gray fitting on the right hand side plus inside that fitting you can't see it is a little rubber piece that you can put inside that fitting to prevent water intrusion or uh, critters getting into your electrical panel so we uh, installed that it actually has a retaining uh, nut on the inside of the box to keep the, the gray piece in place and then it has the rubber piece just inside that cap and then the wire exits after it's been connected to the two posts and you can see we use a zip tie on the far left utilizing an existing hole in the panel that keeps the wire in place and prevents any kind of stress on the wire being pulled uh, against the panel as much as possible. You can't see it in this particular shot because uh, of the end of the wire, but there's Anderson power poles on the end for a quick disconnect and uh, connection. We need to create a Y cable uh, to connect the two panels in parallel uh, to maintain our 12 volts going into the charge controller, which will be coming up in a couple of photos here in just a moment. But that's how we affix the two wires, and the other one's just the opposite. Alrighty, so here's KY4 CKP showing the finished results of putting the panels together, but we're not done. It's kind of like a, a four-part process. We had to put the panels together, we had to create the wiring and the, the uh, uh, Y connection for connecting the panels in parallel. We had to connect them to the uh, uh, charging controller, uh, and then we have to install this in the trailer itself. We used a 25 foot cord for the uh, uh, cables that are going to connect to the panels to go into the trailer so we can get the panels far enough away from the trailer on either side by the way depending on where the sun happened to be positioned but uh, that's what the panels look like after the hinges were installed in our next piece here we've got uh, just a little bit of video of ac4dm doing a little bit of soldering on some of the contacts that we're going to put inside the anderson power poles uh, these are relatively thick and we wanted to make sure that we have good connectivity so this wire was a little bit thicker than what we used coming out of the panels and this is what ultimately is going to go into uh, some anderson power poles for connect now we're going to put a pigtail on the charge controller that is ring terminals going into the charge controller and pa uh, anderson power pole on the other end and then this end will plug into that so you can see the charge controller here with those ring terminals uh, on the right hand side the heat sink on the top there in black and you can see a length of cable about 25 feet uh, to make sure that the panels can be set up somewhere outside of the trailer where they can be in good sunshine and then we actually already have conduit holes in the bottom of the trailer uh, to allow cables antenna uh, cabling and so forth to come up inside the trailer so we hopefully have enough length there and if necessary we can create another length of cable to extend it if we need to get the panels a little bit further away but we thought 25 feet was going to be plenty so this is uh, the back side of the charge controller and in our next picture here we'll have the front side of the charge controller 
<laughs> yet again, a charge controller that AC4DM has had for quite a while. Uh, not the latest uh, charge controllers, but what's really neat about this is taking, uh, making use of something that he's had for years and putting it in play. Because again, a lot of these Elmers have a lot of equipment that's new old stock that just hasn't been used in a project. And it's still perfectly fine. And for our purposes of charging a single, possibly a dual house battery a little bit later down the road, that's all we needed. So just our last picture here coming up in just a moment is going to show where we're going to install the charge controller on a small little rack that we've installed in the emergency communications trailer. It'll go underneath this red panel and uh, he's going to create a faceplate for that. You can see we already have Anderson power pole uh, connectivity there for radios and whatnot. So this ends part one of the solar panel project, charging project for the emergency communications trailer. And we just want to uh, hopefully uh, give you guys some inspiration. I'm KY4 BDP for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. Part two will be coming up a little bit later as we get back to the emergency communications trailer. Enjoy yourselves, create some of these projects and have fun.